The Unshackled Waves, episode 211. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company on this special live episode of the Unshackled Waves. Uh, this is obviously because the, the main story in the past two days has been the political meeting at St Kilda Beach uh, over African crime that has been occurring at that beach and elsewhere in Melbourne this summer, which was organised by Patriot activist Neil Erickson and supported by uh, Blair Cottrell. And I unfortunately wasn't able to get to the event uh, myself. All the Unshackled coverage was done by the our awesome producer Morgan Munro, but I have got with me an eyewitness and an observer of the, the rally, a good friend of the Unshackled, uh, Dia Beltran. Welcome again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, and I already have a vlog out. It's um, doing quite well. So um, if people want to check that out, they can do that too. But I'm happy to talk about my insights and observations. After you've watched the Unshackled's coverage first. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> okay, so let's get a bit of background first about mm. why this uh, political meeting, rally, whatever you want to call it was, was necessary. And St Kilda Beach, in, from late November until mid-December, there were uh, three uh, separate uh, incidents at St Kilda Beach, violence incidents by men described as being of African in appearance. That's the common denominator, but um, it's not just that. Uh, African uh, men, African people in appearance, people of African appearance have been uh, committing crimes, generally speaking, as well, and they are vastly uh represented in um our crime statistics and um the beaches is, is just a part of it like um there's a man who in the western suburbs who ended up in hospital because people were like they were throwing chairs um there was a lady who um had a gun put on her back it's all in my vlog um there there is a problem but uh, the reason we're aware of this problem is because of the media. The media informed us about the problem. And now people like Neil Erickson and um, Blair Cottrell, who lent, who lent his support, are deemed as racist for acting on the information given to us by the media. It's, it's sort of backwards. It makes no sense. And I, I wonder whether anyone else is aware of this. Or well, the media, they just want conflict. Like you saw how in the, the lead up to the rally, they were saying, well, this is going to be Cronulla 2.0. Racial mm. tensions are at boiling point. There was the current affair episode. And we're accused of being the antagonizers, yet... Yet the leftists were the only ones who were arrested by the police. This is a fact. And then people have mentioned to me, well, what about Bluebeard? Bluebeard was not arrested. He was detained because sometimes... Yes, he, he, he can be a little bit of uh, a passionate individual and um, maybe takes things too far. But uh, overall, the side that, that where Blair Cottrell spoke and where Neil spoke and where Ricky T spoke, peaceful, it was fine, I was there, uh, you can take my word for it. Um, yeah, if, if, if something was um, running amok, I would say, yeah, actually, this happened too, but it was it was a, it was a good event. Um, so many uh, patriots were there. Many um, Australians were there, uh, supporting it. Vietnamese people lent their support. Yes, because one of the incidents that had occurred was uh, yeah. St Albans, where Vietnamese uh, shopkeepers had been exactly. uh, terrorised by uh, Sudanese youths who had been uh, robbing uh, their businesses and frightening their their customers. And there was that famous brawl on I think it was Christmas Eve, just before yes, Christmas. Yes, Christmas Eve. That where where they uh, fought back. That's the man that, that, that ended up in hospital. And well, Victoria Police uh, confirmed uh, from that incident that they were dealing with a new African youth crime gang. It wasn't Apex, it was um, BWS. Yeah, the, the blood drill killers. BD, yeah. yeah. 
There's Apex, that was the original yes. one. Then there was Menace to Society, which came to pro prominence last summer. And this was a, yes. a new one, which we were told was made up of really young teenagers around 13, mm -hmm. 14, which is obviously really disturbing. Very disturbing. I mean, um, this is a fantastic country. We love Australia and um, I'm happy to welcome people here. But just you know, ingratiate yourselves and um, assimilate. Why are you causing problems? Why aren't you, why are you spitting on what we're giving you? And contrast that with the uh, Vietnamese. I mean, they're a immigration exactly. migrant success story. I they're mean, fabulous. I mean, the, the fact that they're running successful businesses, well, not just in St. Albans, but well, all over uh, Melbourne. And mm -hmm. well, I, I think they definitely appreciate the opportunity they've been given in Australia. I mean, they fled uh, the Vietnamese communist regime. They war torn. Yeah, and they they came not during the the civil war in Vietnam, but they they fought right to the end until the the communists took over. Then they came to uh, Australia, and they've made a a great uh, contribution. And yeah, they they didn't come to Australia to to put up with thugs terrorizing their their businesses or mm. their communities. I got a photo with one of the Vietnamese uh, patriots, Howie. He was lovely, and um, yeah, I love Vietnamese food, and he was fantastic. And like he, Neil was joking around with them, going, "Oh, that guy, he's an Asian Nazi," and everyone was laughing. It was great. Like um, Aussie Larrikinism. It like the vietnamese they're, they're up for it they're like yeah mm. they play along and blair cottrell and ricky turner of cook's convicts they were happy to pose for a, a photo with the, the south vietnamese flag yes they were and there were also it wasn't just at st kilda beach that these incidents were occurring it was down at chelsea beach there were two nights of violence uh, by uh, used described as being of african uh, in appearance there I was, was there that day yes you were and <laughs> you actually saw like where i it? saw them um i was there with a girlfriend that's why i'm peeling so much because from that that was 42 degree weather day i was at chelsea beach um I said on my on my Instagram that I was in Mount Martha, but I just made that up because I don't want people to know where I am because of for obvious reasons. But um, yeah, I was at Chelsea and um, I saw I saw a group of um, African guys and I was like, oh yeah, cool, you know, because there's you see it you see it all there. Then I left, and then um, two hours later, I found out that things had gone down there, and I was like, what? That's probably it, it could be, might not be, but that's probably the guys that I might have seen. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, that well, thankfully you weren't uh, there, a victim there. of it. Yes, uh, because there was a, a man that was glassed. Uh, uh, another man who tried to stop them stealing possessions. He got beaten up. So it was pretty horrific what happened there. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it's scary, and I, I can see why the general populace, at least um, those of us who are aware of what's going on, I can see why there is a conversation about it and why a political meeting was held. And I think it's perfect within um, anyone's rights to want to want to discuss it and to want and to want to um, you know get people's uh, good you know get a reaction so that people can can s try yeah I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how to articulate myself right now that's okay I'll I'll, I'll take over thank you now there was talk <laughs> Uh, all uh, when these incidents were occur were occurring, not just at St Kilda Beach, but all over Melbourne, that there should be some sort of citizen uh, patrol there. Uh, there was talk among patriot groups of, of that, and the the first uh, patriot to to go down to uh, St Kilda Beach to uh, survey the the situation for themselves was Neil Erickson, along with uh, Ricky Turner. Yes, and. What happened was, and, and this is the full story, is that uh, police told a group of African youths to stop playing soccer on the, on the footpath. And so uh, Neil and Ricky decided to film that. And that's when the African youths got agitated and saying, why are you filming us? And that's when the police, obviously, uh, they're, they're not wanting to have their job any more difficult. And so they asked Neil to uh, stop filming. But of course, Neil films everything in public. He knows his rights. And so he said, I'm entitled to... <laughs> To, to film this and and neil isn't wrong and one of the african youths got so um agitated that he actually got arrested mm -hmm. and capskin sprayed i believe but somehow that's neil's fault yes. somehow that's the fault of the person recording and what you've just stated from beginning to end is what people don't know the, the way it, the way people 
write it when like they 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 talk about it in 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 my comments they say oh well you know what well, don't you think it's unusual that neil erickson was recording a bunch of um kids just playing some soccer yeah yeah he may, but he, the yeah. cops were already there why doesn't anyone mention that and then someone else had the audacity to say why is he filming underage kids shut up well the the man <laughs> arrested we learnt was 25 so i think that's a bit older than <laughs> a teenager they stretch at anything if they can um neil has a history he has a past something we all know about but um it follows him to this day and, and people will say anything um, to this day, to this point, like it doesn't matter how much good you do, you can't redeem yourself because um, people just want to hate whoever, and he's one of those individuals. But yeah, um, everything you've stated is completely on point. Um, he kept recording, and um, yeah, it's not the fault of the person recording that the other person will then become aggressive. Um, yeah, I mean, provocation is no longer a defense in Victoria. No. They, they, they removed it, but all of a sudden provocation is uh, a, a defense again, well, when it's convenient. It's like when people say you shouldn't talk about this particular religious prophet because it could arouse a negative reaction from those people. Well, then that's even more reason to talk about it, isn't it? And so in response to this incident, that's when Neil uh, posted on Facebook that we're going to have a political meeting next weekend at yes. St Kilda Beach, uh, the way he phrased it, to discuss the, the problems we are uh, facing from Apex. Yes. Which is, well, that's just one aspect of it. That was the initial uh, catalyst for, for the political meeting, but uh, it ended up being more so about our government because um, the African youth... They can't really be blamed too much. It's our well, individuals should be held account for absolutely, their action. absolutely. Individualism is is um is something I completely believe in. But um, our government is the one to blame on a federal level, not um Daniel Andrews. He's he's it it doesn't it doesn't start from the state. It actually it's a it's um it's a collection of policies and attitudes. Yes, yes. from our media as well. Yes, I mean that's. Uh, as we mentioned before, I mean, they're the ones who've sort of been trying to create as much drama as possible. Mm. Um, Current Affair, Today Tonight, um, Sunday Night, have all done stories on African crime. And now all of a sudden, um, when the alt media, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, when the alt media chooses to, to, to address it, alt media is racist. Yeah. The, the people who actually want to do something ab uh, about this uh, crime crisis, then the media turns around and attacks them. It's ridiculous. And, and um, it's not lost upon the, the savvy um, Australians. The savvy Australians are aware of this double standard. Many, it's, it, the basics wouldn't have a clue. Now, uh, Neil Erickson, he managed to uh, gain the support of uh, Blair uh, Cottrell for this uh, rally. He posted a message of support uh, on Neil Erickson's uh, Facebook page, mm -hmm. and they were both colleagues in the, the United Patriot Front yes. days when uh, them, what activism they're mainly known for is opposing the, the Bendigo uh, Mosque, and that really... Well, they were accused of being fly-ins to Bendigo, but there is still to this day a strong Patriot Bendigo contingent, and they were there uh, Saturday, and the mosque hasn't been built yeah. as of this point. So it was a successful uh, event, uh, time it in was. Patriot activism, but everyone went there went their separate ways. Um, Blair Cottrell was... Um, associated with Lad Society for a while. Neil, uh, he was with uh, Future, Future Now for about a six month period, yeah. doing a lot of uh, what we would call provocative uh, stunts. Yeah, they all dispersed. Yeah. And Christopher Shortus, who is a, another member of the United Patriots Front, he's now studying a law degree and he's... And he has a YouTube channel um, and he will be doing live streams every Saturday and his channel is called The Bowman. And he's also with UNA Media and Australia First Party. Yes, he is. So there'd been quite this fracturing for a while. But yes, all of a that's, sudden, that's accurate. in just a couple of days, everyone was united again. It seems that way. Um, Christopher Shortest did write this long status with an image of, uh, of Jim Carrey, Dumb and Dumber. And he wrote something to the effect of... Um, these rallies don't do anything. Um, you, the, the only way to uh, to really, and I'm, this is not me paying out Christopher Shaw, this is just me stating a fact. Um, the only way to 
to really make any effect in change essentially is to infiltrate um parliament and and to make change that way and so um so there was mainly unification even Sherman Burgess um yeah. lended his support yeah, which he, he um which i suppose is yeah he posted a message of support even yeah. even though he's um lashed out at the other patriots who's also Ab said some stuff about you uh in the in the past he uh, has but that's but okay we can he, move right along <laughs> He, he, even he decided that it's best to put out a message and that's great that he cause. did yeah, that's great that he did do that that's fine I, I just wish that there was more um unity because despite the fact that um despite the fact that th there is a fracturing there they we should all be united in in the common cause the common cause is australia now Obviously, that was good that everyone was uniting and there was uh, a lot of interest in attending the, the meeting. But of course, uh, the local Antifa, the, the campaign against racism and fascism, we pretty much protest every, well, not just Patriot event, but right wing event. I mean, they mm. protested the, the Nigel Farage uh, event they're planning to po protest dr jordan peterson who's i'm going <laughs> well he he's not even that i i, I would say out he's there. not he's not even on the right he says he's not on the right he says he's not on the left yeah but they, but they make an effort of protesting everything because they're morons yeah intimidatory tactics yes and there was also a another well a community picnic organized by uh i guess the appropriately named smashed avocado uh movement which yeah was I, tom tanuki the one who lent his support for that or he, i i don't know but uh tom tanuki well he had his uh pride uh slash a bit over the christmas break he had a a run-in with uh bluebeard yeah bluebeard found him in in public and it turned out that tom tanuki wasn't uh, quite as big a tough guy in real life as he is uh through a video camera he, yeah like whatever bluebeard did um was obviously wrong but uh, Tom Tanuki is not a man that I would want to stand next to me protecting me. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> now, of course, the, the, the media, because there were these Antifa counter-protests planned, they were saying, oh, the, the police are worried about a riot. And of course, they, they, they said it was going to be Cronulla 2.0. They even claimed that Neil said it was going to be Cronulla 2.0. I he don't said, think he, he said No, that. he said no such thing, Neil. So that no, was another I don't think he said that. fake yeah. news. And of course, every... Uh, what? Me the media misreported? <sighs> and of course, they led every article saying it was... Uh, this rally was organised by convicted criminals, uh, Blair Cottrell and Neil Erickson. Yeah, of course. That's the best way to get it. Because if you say two convicted criminals are organising an event against um current criminals it sort of it, it it makes the argument look stupid they do it intentionally yeah yeah and of course uh blair uh went to prison was it a decade ago 11 um, years ago yeah and he mentioned that on on your channel he did yes and he was um found guilty of what he was found guilty of um everyone already knows aggravated burglary um how many how many mistakes does one have to make for it to always be mentioned again and yeah. again and again and again like someone can be, ha, do a lifetime of good do one bad thing and then it taints them forever i don't know there's something wrong with that i, I feel yeah and uh, neil's uh, criminal conviction was for harassing a rabbi and he discussed that on a interview on uh, the unshackled uh, youtube channel i think he's discussed it in many places but yeah, yeah go, I'm, he, glad he, that, he, I'm glad he mentioned it yeah, on the unshackled. he said that it was more of a prank call that he was he, he was well because we all know what neil's like he said that he was he's a, a larrikin yeah and like obviously like take neil at his word at that but um <laughs> obviously the the rabbi on the other end of the phone didn't think it was that funny and so uh <laughs> obviously evidently and so obviously that's why uh he ended up pleading guilty for that and then they also mentioned that uh, blair and neil were found guilty of uh inc inciting serious contempt for, for Muslim, muslims which was the mock beheading video uh, that they did during their bendigo activism now it's interesting that the the so-called free press you know they're supposed to be for free speech they hold it against neil and blair like they they say that it's 
they say that oh they've been convicted for hate speech that that's a terrible thing i would have thought that the media or of all people should be against hate speech laws i mean in my opinion like a conviction for hate speech like that doesn't count no it definitely doesn't count and also um blair cottrell mentioned at the uh troop tv what was the flag rally that we went to Yes, the, the True Blue Crew Aussie Pride flag Aussie Pride march. flag march, sorry. He mentioned there in a speech, I remember, I recall him saying that there were no Muslims in the courthouse. They don't care. They didn't care. Yeah, there was no like, complainers. It's the government that is um, choosing to be offended on behalf of Muslims just because they have a vendetta against people like Neil, people like Blair, people like Christopher Short. It's like these individuals are targets. They're like the Tommy Robinsons of Australia. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Now, let's talk about the, the day itself. Now, sure. I've got other commitments this summer, so I couldn't uh, go. I would have loved to have gone, and people who follow the Unshackled know I like to get out on right. the streets. Morgan worked hard. <laughs> yes, Morgan did an outstanding uh, job. He's, he he's, did. He's just released uh, the first bit of our highlights. There, There's more coming. Now, obviously... You don't know how the day is going to transpire. No, I mean, we none of us do. The organisers have got a plan, the police have a plan, but you don't know what's... So when you arrived at St Kilda Beach, what what was the feel, feeling of the scene? I was anxious. Uh, the feeling on my end was anxiety, but um, everyone was, like, happy. Everyone um, was like, oh, hey, how are you? There was such com camaraderie. Like, everyone knew everyone. It's like, oh, hey, mate, hey, mate. Oh, hey, mate, how are you? Um, it was just um, good people coming together who are concerned about their country. So it was really quite um, beautiful. Um, I didn't see any any lefties. Um, we did driving. I, I did driving in. But um, overall, I saw no 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 lefties. Um, it was really really nice. Like I ran into the you know the Bendigo cheerleader ladies. Yeah yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> they're fun as they love me. I love them too. Um, I ran into like Stephen Joyce, Fraser Anning. I got an interview with him. Um, yes, he was a, a special guest there. He didn't he, was, he didn't speak. But no, he was offered to, but he he chose not to. But he gave, was happy to give uh, statements of support. Uh, Absolutely, to, he to was. the media. Now let's talk about the the speeches themselves now obviously blair was the the keynote uh, speaker given he that was. his ears are good uh, orator mm. and he spoke about that it, it's what you mentioned before that it's not the fault of the africans or the african community it's the corrupt government absolutely media alliance and he and he also talked about uh, immigration in general that uh which he said depresses our wages uh that they're designed to replace in terms of the the local workers and because immigrants don't take up much housing space that's that's what uh, governments and corporations want which i didn't think it in my opinion he needed to, to dwell on that because in my opinion it was a meeting about african crime and that should have been the in the focus well, it, it was the focus, but um, I, I think um, Blair shouted out the cops. He said, you know, the cops are here and it's not even their fault. The fault is of the government. The government this, the government that. Um, so even though it was there, we were there to reclaim our beaches, so to speak, um, the, the, the focal point of blame always goes back to um, our government. And the reason, in my opinion, that this situation has festered, because this is the second summer of African crime uh, that, that we've seen, it's basically because the, the governments and the judiciary are not enforcing equality before the law. The judiciary like in sentencing always makes excuses as oh, yeah that, it's their socioeconomic yeah. you know well a lot of people from poor from poorer areas don't commit crimes and so. plus if if they're in a new country I, I i think if they do something wrong they need to learn that there's a punishment for that absolutely I mean, that's, a, that's an obvious thing <laughs> like that's what you teach children you do something wrong you get punished absolutely i and completely agree with you there's no excuses i mean if you if like as you're a child if you do something wrong it's not oh well you were like feeling down that day no mm, exactly no um each every everyone should be uh held accountable for their actions and if you are committing crimes whether you're white whether you're black whether you're latin you you pay the you do the you do the crime you pay the time 
So I would have liked to have seen that addressed in well, some of the, the speeches, because that, well, that was, I remember last summer, we, we heard about uh, African youths who were arrested, but then released on, on bail, and it just made the mind boggle. Now, to the, the Andrews government credit and Victoria Police credit, they have been tougher in their talk uh, this summer. For some reason, I think because they've just been re-elected, mm. because last year they probably needed the votes of the, the African community, and so they didn't want to upset them. But uh, Lisa Neville and uh, Daniel Andrews, they have been talking tougher. The Victoria Police, they've got this Operation Sand Safe. There does seem to be, they're taking it more seriously this summer. As well they should. Yeah. So I'm going to give them a small tick there. <laughs> Just a tiny little tick. Yeah, you're not wrong. I understand. Now, obviously, the, the police's main role there was to separate the, the two crowds. They were completely segregated. Yeah. Yeah. And this, there, there was obviously the uh, community barbecue, but there was also the, the campaign against racism and fascism. They tried to get uh, close and and there was uh, what happened is well they were actually quite humiliated the leftist activists they were greatly outnumbered and there was a situation oh, they were. where they were able to be encircled by the patriot activists not because like the patriot activists were not going to you know uh, run them it was just they wanted to jeer them and yes. mock them absolutely well um definitely the patriotic side um outnumbered the the leftist side when i when i did finally decide to walk towards where the leftists were everything had really died down um and the speeches were all over so i thought well i'll, I'll walk there now and it was like maybe a hundred there ish and um, our side definitely had um, over 400. Now, the main negative from uh, Saturday was that the media picked up uh, two uh, people allegedly doing the Nazi, Nazi. salutes. And there was another uh, person who brand was brandishing a World War II German SS helmet, which... Which I didn't see. <laughs> yeah. And this was three people out of 500, 500. there. But of course, if they, they see a couple of people doing a Nazi salute, then it's then they can call mm. all of them a Nazi. Can I just say that um, from my perspective, I think it was a well-timed photo because someone on my, on my YouTube channel left a comment. And on that comment, they said that um, one of the men who was wearing a red shirt and he's doing this... Um, I just did, I did <laughs> yeah. it very quickly. Oh, no, you'll be, the, the, the left will take, I'm a Nazi. That. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're finished. Yes. I'm a pro Israeli Nazi. Um, yeah, so that it's, it was a well-timed photo and someone, um, was, it's, I've, I've posted it on my, in, on my page if someone wants to see, wants to read it. But basically the lady said that the man was not doing a Nazi yeah, salute. Yeah, if you actually analyze his hand, it's not like. A Nazi salute is like this. It's he, very he, forceful yeah, and, yeah. and there's an intent. He, yeah, he had his hand like sort of like... It wasn't his, a Nazi symbol. Yeah, mm. it, was, it was not firm enough to be a Nazi no. salute. No, and there was also a man doing this. Yeah. He was just being silly. Yeah. He I was mean, being funny. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, there was a... So a that's, two, that's two down already that yeah. we've already debunked. I mean, it reminded, I think, everyone of Basil Fawlty from Fawlty Towers when he does the, 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 the moustache and, yeah. the, uh, and, the, and the salute in, in a comedic John Cleese. Way. Like, if you're a legit neo-Nazi, you're not going to do it in such a silly way. No, and if there were neo-Nazis there in the crowd, can I just say that um, you have no control of who is your fan. Like, um, The Unshackled has, what, over 5,000 uh, followers? Oh, we've got more than that. Sorry, sorry. Tell on, me. On Facebook, we've, we've now got over 16,000 Okay, 16,000 followers. followers. I have over 1,000 followers. In that percentage, say 1% has committed the act of murder, to, as far as we know. We cannot help that those people happen to follow us. Like, so can, can people not, um, can people not, like, fathom that fact and attempt to sort of realize that you cannot control the people who attend? It's, it's really not, it's not, it's not that big a stretch to make in your mind. It really isn't that hard to figure that out. Even well, leftists are not that stupid. Well, another reason why the media called it a Nazi uh, rally is because of uh, Blair and Neil's uh, past. Yeah, and uh, Neil Erickson, he admits he was completely an, acknowledges an, it a neo-Nazi, and like and there, is, there is there is a photo uh, photos of Neil uh, 
Mm. Doing, doing the Nazi salute, he said that that was that was in uh, that was in the past. He doesn't believe that anymore. No, he's been on my channel a number of times, several different live streams where we've talked about that very subject. Um, and Blair was on my channel not too long ago and said that. Um, Actually, he didn't. He didn't acknowledge it, but he did say that um, his thoughts and opinions have evolved from the past to yeah. now. Like something that you thought years and years ago, are you people still going to hold that accountable now? Like I used to think yeah. things when I was younger. I don't think them now. Yeah, Come on, people! People evolve. Come on, people! <laughs> And the comment that's always dragged out is the the one that's attributed to him saying there should be a portrait of Hitler in every classroom. Now, that's not true. Yeah, he, he never said that. Yeah, he addressed that on a video on his oh, Facebook has deleted his Facebook page again, where he's talked about that there's this fake account which has been posting for years yeah. comments and well let's not forget in the in the lead up to this rally there was a fake facebook post that was shared around that that ne neil wrote neil uh, po uh, posted to this and blair responded yeah yeah to the to this group uh, uh cooks convicts in a circle there is no such group no and and even people on the right people like bade and motti i'm sorry to call you out dude but um believed it yeah come on yeah and just come on <sighs> neil's post was littered with uh spelling mistakes it's spe it's spelt hawks uh h-o-r-k-s <laughs> yeah because apparently he's dyslexic yeah and said it was good to have blair back on board and spelt board as b-o-r-e-d <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's and, entertaining. and said that uh, this rally was apparently a just a strategy for them to get more Facebook likes and said like, oh, although we're not going to be violent, our, our supporters won't be able to help themselves and oh, that's what we really want. Mm. And then it has a comment from Blair saying that, oh, there's only 13 people in this group, Ericsson, are you sure they're all trustworthy? <laughs> and like, you're able to debunk this because Blair, Blair is banned from Facebook. And so, exactly. Like, if they were going to do this, they should have done it on Twitter. It would have been a little bit more realistic. So, yeah. people, if you're going to try a lie next time, use Twitter. Yeah. And so, and I even saw news.com.au. They posted it as as real. Because they're stupid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so, that, that's how easy it is for the left to They didn't do theirs. their due diligence. Yeah. This is how easy it is for fake news and fake, you know, supposed fa well, a fake post to, to make the rounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, and well, we've talked a lot about the the mainstream media reporting, but now that the, the politicians have decided to condemn it, Scott Morrison saying he called it uh, ugly uh, racial protests. Yeah, um, on the leftist side, it was a little ugly. It was a little violent. Mm -hmm. But he did say <laughs> that for our uh, multicultural society to uh, be cohesive, that we need to have strong border protection, assimilation. This is true. And uh, that uh, they have... What was the other thing that he said uh, that uh, we all, we also need to have uh, the law enforced? Mm, well, the multicultural experiment is not working and cannot work unless immigrants like my parents come to the country and assimilate to the Australian way of life. If you're not going to do that, you know I don't want to inherit your problems. So can you get out? Like uh, Bill Shorten, of course, that uh, uh, put out a statement saying he uh, condemned this uh, racist rally. So did the race discrimination uh, commissioner. Then there was a few other the Greens, uh, uh, politi yeah, Sarah Hansen Young. Yeah, they were f appalled that uh, Fraser Anning was there and, and <gasps> shook, shook uh, Blair's hand. Uh, I got that moment. I didn't put it on my vlog, but I got that moment. Yeah, so uh, they, they couldn't believe that an elected politician would uh, shake hands with a convicted criminal. Because, you know, no one has a past. <laughs> and uh, Tanya Plibersek said that oh, the government should uh, no longer accept uh, Fraser Anning's vote. The uh, other politicians who condemn were Tim Watts, who's a, a Labor backbencher. And uh, fun fact, uh, Tim Watts was the one who called Neil Erickson a dickhead when he confronted Sam Dastyari. That's Tim funny. Watts was there with Sam Dastyari at the time. Tim Wilson is a liberal backbencher. He uh, condemned the, the the rally. And I think we already mentioned Sarah Hansen Young. Yeah. Oh, what, what else do you expect? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, and of course the, the left were on meltdown on social media. And I think what made it... Even it, Neil's what, pages were down as well. Yeah, yeah, he got because if you look at his Facebook page, the the last post was from Wednesday. Mm. So, 
there, yeah, there was definitely a lot of Facebook shenanigans going going on. The the Facebook event has now been deleted, and people who are hosts of that have been zucked now. Mm. So yeah, Facebook is playing playing games. Playing games, definitely. But yeah, it was good. The police conduct was good. Yeah, and, and like I said, the police uh, have they the, are dealing with it better this summer. Yeah, the police usually um at the TBC flag rally march they were quite hostile towards tom sewell and uh, blair but this time around oh actually even um at the abortion rally where uh neil showed up and and blair did uh they were quite aggressive but um this time around um because there was so much cooperation on both ends um it seemed like uh it was very peaceful it was really good to see yeah and it was just a shame that the politicians uh crit uh condemned it as a uh, racist gathering as we mentioned there was the uh, the vietnamese uh, cu uh, community there they were they were there mm. in support there was a whole range of different uh, various uh, groups uh, who who lent their support to this rally yes yeah, yeah many groups lent their support it was really really good to see and some people weren't there for the event they were just having lunch but they ended up at the event mm. <laughs> so that was good <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then they, they saw the value in it. Yeah. And as we mentioned before, there after quite a few years of fracturing the, the Patriot movement largely combined for it. It wasn't just Blair who spoke, there was uh Neil Erickson said a few words. Ricky T. Yeah, Ricky uh, Ri First time uh, I met him. Ricky Ricky Turner will call him on this. Oh sorry. Uh, uh, well uh, Ricky Turner, uh, he's uh, lovely and he, he spoke really well and um he's a very jovial fellow. Yeah. yeah. And Kane Miller from the, the That's Tourism right. Group. I yeah, he was he was there too. Yeah. He was and, he had, he was brief. His his words were brief. Yeah. And so there's a lot of uh, talk, uh, Neil said in our video, that it was a UPF uh, 2.0 and uh, that uh, looked like the band was back together because there was... Uh, I guess it, from the... As I guess from the outset, it could it could be seen that way because there was a video shared by uh, various leftist pages this week that Neil made uh, when the the UPF uh, broke out, where he uh, blames Blair and Tom Sewell for letting Nazis into the the UPF and saying it's finished and yeah, that good old fort days. Fortitude when it was that that was going to be their political party. He said, "Oh, UPF is dead. Fortitude is is dead." And so, like, obviously there was that falling out there, but yeah. They're, they've managed to come back together together well it seems um that they can certainly put their differences aside um at least the majority of them to to unite for for the greater good and that's a good thing whether that means that the upf is back i don't know um these particular patriots have have day-to-day -day jobs they they work very hard um so uh in terms of practicality i'm not really sure but um, it, 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 it could definitely go that way, yeah. And for those who, who like, look at that video and say, oh, how can they be back together? But if, this is politics. People have falling outs and then they, they, they come back together. I mean, these people are supposed to... Be, oh, let's not forget that the, the, the fights that the, the left have all the all the time all the time they're, ours are just more public yeah they're the all well, the media cover up the 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 leftists fighting with each other but definitely uh, pol politics is there's alliances change change all the time but mm -hmm. the the important thing is is that the, the movement's united once again because yes, that is 500 people with five days notice that's that's, that's a pretty, pretty good, good. so imagine had it been like three weeks yeah because Oof. we were both at the the True Blue Crew Aussie Pride flag we were. match back in. Uh, you was, drove me in. Yeah, it was late <laughs> late June, and yeah. that was really demoralising, in my opinion. There was about fifty. That was my f yeah. Yeah, fifty people there. That was uh, 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 that. That was probably, in all honesty, a low point for the the movement. And the only sort of newsworthy thing to come out of it was Blair confronting the the dandy dandy man performer wearing the pink yeah. jumpsuit in Federation Square, which was quite uh, controversial. It was controversial. Slightly entertaining. But yeah, things things seem to have turned around and Definitely. both uh, Neil and Blair have said we're, we're going to hold future rallies. Blair talked about uh, next we're going to take it to Daniel Andrews' office. Uh, office. So he That'll certainly, be because after his... Um, interview on on sky news when there was well sky news uh, uh, disavowed him banned him and took adam giles who interviewed him uh off the air uh blair was uh laying low for 
a number of months just on on social uh, media, mm. but uh, this seems to be sort of a, a rebirth. Yeah, there's definitely a resurgence, um, and we need that. That's what Australia needs. We need like France has a revolution happening once again, and Australia seems, well, at least Victoria seems like they're 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 rallying together, and and they see they see the value in what it can do. It can unite the people, um, and. Uh, it can. I don't know what it can do in terms of laws, but it's certainly waking people up, and people need to be alert and aware of what's going on. And, and I was pleased, and I think everyone was pleased that yesterday went really well. It did. Yesterday went really, really well. Um, it was so good to see so many different people. Um, I also saw um, Thomas Brasher. Do you know who that is? Yes, yes. Uh, I've got a pending uh, interview with him coming yes, up. Yes, he's it's... lovely. Um, I'm. I interviewed him before you did. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> That was when he was Thomas Hopper. That's when he was Thomas Hopper. Yeah, but um, some of the lads were there, but um, for some reason, um, it was a pity to see that they, they didn't get to really watch the speeches because um, I think they were advised not to, not to mingle with the peasants, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which I find strange. Um, anyway, but uh, it, it was good to yeah, it was good to see it was Thomas Brasher, and um, I took a photo with him and. Um, he would have been someone that could have spoken. He yeah, and he's been... from Sydney, so there was a lot yes, of people so he who should made have... a special effort. To, yes, to he down came down all the way from Sydney, and then he didn't get to watch the speeches, and I was disappointed for him. But um, yeah, he's 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 um he's a he's a secret weapon. Yeah, yeah, I've seen him uh, speak before. He's at the... fantastic. Yeah, so he's he's definitely going places. Definitely, yeah. we agree. Yeah, so it was. Yeah, it was it was great. As I said, I was, I was disappointed that I couldn't be there. Oh, it would have been good to see you. Yeah, I'm seeing you now. It's all good. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, so it was great to to have you in to, to give you. the the first hand account, counter some of the fake news uh, that yeah. has been put out there. And if you want uh, more coverage of of the political meeting, um, stay tuned. We've got more of the Unshackled's videos. Uh, I'm not sure if you're planning to release any more. I do have raw footage that I, um, I'm considering releasing, so stay tuned on my YouTube channel. I will not be releasing it on my Facebook page. My Facebook page just gets edited videos. Yep, so, and I'll urge all of our followers to follow you on Facebook and, and YouTube. You're also <laughs> active on Twitter. I'm active on Twitter. I have a Minds account and a BitChute, just in case yep. anything ever goes wrong. <laughs> Uh, and of course, uh, the Unshackled will st uh, continue to bring you future events here in Melbourne. Future activism will be out on the ground. So uh, it's been great that we've been able to bring you uh, extensive coverage the these past few days. Now, of course, we can't do this without our followers' support. So if you can, please support us on Patreon. Uh, send us a donation via PayPal or sign up to a premium membership uh, on our website because uh, that will make sure that we can continue to counter the, the mainstream media and provide a, a proper alternative. Definitely. Well, thanks once again, Dia, for being in the studio with me. Thank you for everyone who's been watching us live on Facebook. We couldn't get the, the YouTube up, so if you're watching this on YouTube, this is a, a recording, but it's just as good. <laughs> so thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. See you later, guys. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.